The and one. Our, <laughs> and our special guest right now, Tun. The one, the only. Yep. Ron <laughs> Katz. Ron, how you doing, brother? Hey, Spencer. It's truly an honor to be on this podcast with you. Listen, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, no, no applause no. necessary. <laughs> thank you. Please sit. Please sit. <laughs> My next show starts in an hour, so hold the applause, please. <laughs> nah, it's great being on with you, Spencer. Such a an esteemed guy like yourself. No, that means um, I'm great historian. Thank you. Very knowledgeable of our sport. So it's really cool to be on with you. Listen, to, for for me to hear that coming from you, yeah, you know I mean, it's a good thing I'm sitting down. Because that that's a that's an honor and thank you very much, sir. Look, Ron, nah, you, you, you've been in the you've well been in deserved. The game, you've been in the game for like fifty years, brother. Going on it, getting close, pal. Yeah, well, like if you say forty six years, that's fifty years as far as I'm concerned. That's like that's like yeah, forty four years. That's as long as I've been living, right? You've done, you've done. <laughs> <laughs> now it's, well, it's the truth. I was born in seventy three, but you've done so many fantastic things from like working with top rank working with sugar yes. leonard being around muhammad ali um like what, what would you say your standout accomplishments have been um in oh in boy I, I why did i know you were going to ask me that because <laughs> that you know there's been so many great events with great fights it, it's tough to pick out one mm -hmm. but if i you know one, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes, we can sir. hear you, sir. We can hear you. Yeah, because I'm getting calls. I, I apologize. Don't worry. You're a um, One thing that really stood out, stands out for me, was uh, when James Tony went and knocked out Michael Nunn in Davenport, Iowa, when Fantastic Nunn was fact. considered untouchable. Yes. And James, you know, was my Not baby. 1991, he, that was. Come along. Come on, no, and uh, uh, he, he scored a massive upset. So and then and then the the Barkley you know on a different level there the Barkley Hearns fights were great Barkley Duran I mean you know there's been so many but you know those kind of stand out to me. Well, the the Barkley Duran fight um, that was fight of the year I remember that like that was, yeah that was in Atlantic City my I wife sang the national anthem we had an unbelievable blizzard that night in Atlantic City. Nobody thought Duran had a shot, wow. and it turned out to be fight of the year it was in front of, like, a sold-out house. You yeah. couldn't even move in the city. That's how much snow was there. What was that? That was Duran Barkley. What was that February 89 that was? Yeah, that's, that's when that fight was. Yep, yep that, back yeah, back in the late 80s. Yeah, yeah, yep. that, that was an incredible fight because at the fact that like, who would have thought looking at Roberto Duran um, losing to Tommy Hearns? at the time when he boxed Tommy Hearns. And then who would have thought, like, five years later, that you would have seen that same Roberto Duran in a ring defeating a man that defeated Tommy Hearns to become WBC middleweight champion of the world. Come on, spit the knowledge. Just yeah, I mean, he, re he really put forth the effort that night. What a terrific fight that was. Place was going nuts, too. You know, those are great events. There's been so many. That's when Atlantic City was Atlantic City. You know, the, the, one of the fight capitals along with Vegas over here in the States before all these other casinos and states popped up. So those are the good old days. Hi, Ron. Uh, Tundi here, co-host <laughs> for the show. Um, tell me, what, what really inspired you to become a matchmaker? And um, how do you feel boxing has changed over the years? Well, for me personally, I was never really, to be honest with you, a, a big boxing fan. I mean, I knew who Muhammad Ali was, but I was more of a baseball fan. Yes. And I and I went to work with a guy named Lou Falcino, mm -hmm. who, along with two other guys, um, developed the technology um, for closed circuit TV back in the 70s. Yes. Wow. And one thing led to another, and we started doing live shows, and I was like a gopher. And then I, then I was lucky enough to meet, you know, guys like, Johnny Boz and Bruce Trampler, who kind of took me under their wing, and the rest is history. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. as far as I'm, you know, my my story goes. Now, boxing today, you know, has changed dramatically. We've all seen it. Yes. Now you have, um, you know, the streaming services dominating um, the fights that are available to the fans. Where in the past, obviously, it was you know either closed circuit pay per view or, or free television. You know, in, in the seventies and eighties. And even before, you know, you had CBS, ABC, NBC over here in the States. Um, 
especially after the 76 Olympics, you know, with, with the Leonard, Howard Davis, that team, yes. Sphinx Brothers, all them guys. Um, but now, you know, you, you know, people watch fights on, on their phones. Yeah. So, you know, it's evolved with the technology that's available today. So basically, you know, you can't really, you, 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 do you foresee the death of pay-per-view then, basically? You know, it seems that the streaming is the way forward. Or, you know, can we see the now, pay-per-view system coming back? Or Well, I, I think it'll always be around. Yes. Um, you know, for example, um, the fight this weekend with Deontay Wilder and, and, and Ortiz. Yes. Um, and I think when, you know, there is a fight, that calls for the magnitude to reach as many people as you can and generate as much money as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it will be seen on pay-per-view no matter who, the, who might be the promoter. I understand. Another thing I want to say, you hold a record of being ring magazines, matchmaker of the year for seven years on the truck. Consecutively. Consecutively. Wait, there's a cut. <laughs> oh, there's wait, a wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's right. You turn him. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Once again, once again, thank you very much. Please sit. Please sit. There's more to the show. Thank you. Don't forget second show in an hour. Yeah, no, those are the good old days. Um, you know, when, when, when ring magazine and KO boxing, you know, gave out yearly awards. Those were during my top rank HBA days from uh, the late 80s through the, the middle 90s. It was always me one, Russell Peltz two, and, and Bruce Trampler three. Yes. Uh, I, remember, so, I remember one time you were saying that, you know, a matchmaker is the most underappreciated, undervalued person in boxing. Now, why did you say that? Why, why would you make a statement like that, Ron? <laughs> Because, you know, the matchmaker is always the guy behind the scenes. He's not the guy, you know, in front of the camera, like the promoter, like the fighters, the participants. You know, he's like the heartbeat, you know, and the heartbeat hides behind the chest. So you can't see it. But, you know, it's it's such a tough job because there's a lot, lot more than just putting two guys together. Sometimes that's the easiest part. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's everything else that goes along with it, especially nowadays with, with the necessary medicals, you know, needed, you know, for the safety of the fighters, which mm-hmm. which is, you know, so important, um, you know, it, it, the travel, the applications, the paperwork. So it, 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 it's, you know, matchmaking has evolved into more than just, you know, when my mentor, Teddy Brenner, the greatest ever, Teddy you know, Brenner would call up two guy. guys. Yep. Teddy greatest Brenner. ever. Trust me, no one could touch that guy. <laughs> okay. No, nope. absolutely. You know, he, you know, he took Bruce Trampler under his wing, and then you know, Bruce brought me in, and he took me under his wing. And being with Teddy as many years as I was, which was not enough, was such a wonderful thing. Just to hear all the stories was, you know, was worth it. <laughs> mm. Well, I have to say, Ron, this has been a very insightful, <laughs> especially for me because. Listen, I've known Spencer more than half of my life. And uh, for years, he's always been saying, Ron Katz is the man. Ron Katz is the man. He's been telling me this for so long. And just to hear your voice finally after hearing you in so many stories, is really an honor and a, a pleasure for me. So that's, that's so kind of you. But believe me, it's my honor to be on with you guys. I mean, you know, when Spencer called me, I, I was really excited. I mean, you guys, you know, I hold you both in very high esteem. So... Thank you very much. And I'm shocked you didn't even talk about the, the Joshua no, Ruiz rematch. No, we're gonna get, that was we're the gonna last get, question. We'll get into that. Don't worry about the, that. The mega match, the rematch between Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz. Let's hear your thoughts on that, sir. Well, to me, this is a very interesting fight. We, we all know both guys can fight. Yes. So to me, this comes down completely to the mental aspect of Mm -hmm. of the fight itself where the two fighters heads are at Mm -hmm. to me that's paramount because one with ruiz you know did all the the fame and fortune that came along with with his great upset affect him does he still have that hunger that's what i said with with the other guy with anthony how is he going to react if this guy gets in the ring and starts doing the same thing how is he going to come overcome the thoughts that are going to go through his head 
Uh oh, here we go again. Yes, yes. So to me, it's 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 a battle of of the mental aspect. Okay, but we rather don't want than we, we don't, physical. We don't want no sitting on the fence run. <laughs> yeah, what's your what's your call, we Mr. Kaz? We want a cool, Mr. We want a, the prediction from the great Mr. Kaz. Come on. Oh, you gonna put me on the spot? Yes, yeah, sir. most definitely. <laughs> This is the fight is right. It's going to be a draw. <laughs> Come on. How's that? Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. You're such a great audience. Thank you. Oh, it means the world to me. You mean, Ron, thank I, you. I, I, I have to thank you for coming on the show. Um, seriously, you're, you're my guy. You've always been my guy for a hot minute. Yes. But even more than I love you, Span. Yeah, thank you very much. So who, who's the young guy? Because you're at, you're at um, a press conference now. Who's fighting? Who's, who's we have fighting? two local kids, Johnny Hernandez here in Long Island and, and Danny Gonzalez. They fought a, a, a terrific fight, which Gonzalez squeaked out a decision. You know, two, you know, real solid club level type fighters. Right. That give it their best, and that's all you can ever ask of anybody who climbs 100%. through the ropes is yes. to give it your best, no matter what ends up happening. Yes, so they're doing a rematch Saturday in front of a you know our our uh, our, our uh, home base, the Paramount here in Huntington, Long Island, sold out show. It's our thirty seventh show there. We sell out just about every show, so it would be a fun night again. Fantastic. fantastic. Keep on doing what you're doing, Ron. And can I also say a massive, fantastic congratulations of you becoming a Thank Hall of you. Famer. You know I mean, that must be you know I mean? that must be a really, really big fact. Atlantic City. Thank you, Sam. Oh, what a great audience. It was the best audience I've ever <laughs> performed in front of. Thank you, thank you. Now, nah, this one means a lot to me. It really does. I made my bones down there, so it means a lot to me. And thank you guys for having me on. It was truly a pleasure, and I, and I loved it. Thank you. The one... Uh, only and and I got to wait, wait, time out. Time hold out. Just <laughs> hold a pout. Just hold on a second. I have more to say. Okay. I must thank one Spencer Fearon for yes. turning this dinosaur onto WhatsApp. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. you're welcome, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't that, man. All I'm right, guys. I'm not going to ring America and pay them charges, man. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Take care. All God right. bless thank you. Much, thank sir. you again. All right. The bye bye. The one and only wrong cats. <laughs> Remember to like, comment and subscribe to the Stamina for Soul YouTube channel.